This lesson describes the properties of real numbers and how they're used in algebraic expressions. You can look at algebra as a game. Real numbers are the players, and the properties are the rules. The first set of properties are postulates. Postulates are statements that are accepted as true without proof. There are ten postulates. The first is closure, a property that says if you add or multiply two real numbers, the result is another real number. You won't use this property unless you become a math major in college. Each of the next four properties have two parts, one for addition and one for multiplication. The commutative properties say that when you add or multiply two numbers, the order of the numbers doesn't matter. The associative properties say when you add or multiply three numbers, the order of the operations doesn't matter. The identity properties define identity elements for addition and multiplication. The inverse properties define inverses for addition and multiplication. Finally, the distributive property says you can multiply across the sum. These properties are the rules for adding real numbers. These properties are the rules for multiplying real numbers. The distributive property is a rule for combining the two operations. Notice there are no properties for subtraction or division. There's a good reason for this, which will be explained in a later part of this lesson. Now, let's look at each of the postulates. For the commutative property of addition, when you add two numbers, the order of the numbers doesn't matter. For example, 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2 equals 5. Also, for multiplication, the order doesn't matter. For example, 3 times 5 equals 5 times 3 equals 15. For the associative property of addition, when you add three numbers, the order of addition doesn't matter. For example, to add 2 plus 3 plus 4, you could add 2 plus 3 and then add 4 for 9. Or you could add 3 plus 4 and then add 2 for 9. For the associative property of multiplication, when you multiply three numbers, the order of multiplication doesn't matter. For example, to multiply 2 times 3 times 4, you could multiply 2 times 3 and then multiply by 4 for 24. Or you could multiply 3 times 4 and then times 2 for 24. The commutative and associative properties seem so simple and obvious. This part of the lesson is often passed over quickly without much thought. However, you probably use these properties all the time without realizing it. For example, to add 2 plus negative 3 plus 5, you would probably begin by adding the two positive numbers. 2 plus 5 equals 7 and then negative 3 plus 7 equals 4. Without thinking about it, you're using the commutative property to reverse these two numbers. The sum of 2 and negative 3 becomes the sum of negative 3 and 2. Then, you're using the associative property to perform this addition first. 2 plus 5 is 7, and then, Negative 3 plus 7 is 4.
the identity properties define identity elements for addition and multiplication. The identity element for addition is zero, which means you can add zero to any number and the result is the same number. For example, four plus zero is four. The identity element for multiplication is one, which means you can multiply any number by 1, and the result is the same. For example, 1 times 5 is equal to 5. The inverse properties define inverses for addition and multiplication. For addition, every number a has an inverse, such that their sum is 0. For example, negative 4 is the inverse of 4, and 5 is the inverse of negative 5. Notice this symbol is not negative a. It's an expression for the inverse of a or the opposite of a. For example, if a equals 4, then the inverse of a equals negative 4. And if a equals negative 5, then the inverse of a is plus 5. For multiplication, every number a has an inverse, such that their product is 1. For example, 1 third is the inverse of 3. And 2 over 5 is the inverse of 5 over 2. Notice this symbol is not 1 over a or 1 divided by a. It's an expression for the inverse of a or the reciprocal of a. For example, if a equals 2, then the inverse of a is 1 over 2. And if a equals one third, then the inverse of a is three. Also, zero does not have an inverse. Division by zero is not defined in algebra. As with the commutative and associative properties, the identity and inverse properties seem so simple and obvious they are often passed over quickly without much thought. Here's an example that shows how these properties are used to solve an equation. Begin by adding negative 5 to both sides. The inverse property makes 5 plus negative 5 equal to 0. And the identity property makes x plus 0 equal to x. On the right side of the equation, 9 plus negative 5 is 4. So the inverse and identity properties of addition were used to isolate the variable and find a solution to the equation. Here's another example of using the inverse and identity properties to solve an equation. Begin by multiplying both sides by one-third. The inverse property makes one-third times three equal to one, and the identity property makes one times a equal to a. On the right side of the equation, one-third times twelve is twelve over three and 12 over 3 is 4. So the inverse and identity properties of multiplication were used to isolate the variable and find the solution to the equation. There are two other properties related to the identity and inverse properties. The zero property of multiplication says that any number multiplied by zero is zero. For example, negative three times zero is zero. The multiplication property of negative one says that if you multiply a number by negative one, you get its inverse. 
For example, if you multiply 8 by negative 1, you get negative 8. On the other hand, if you multiply negative 6 by negative 1, you get plus 6. The final property or postulate is the distributive property, which says you can multiply across the sum. This is not an obvious property, but it's easy to see that it's true. For example, 4 times 2 plus 3 should be the same as 4 times 2 plus 4 times 3. So on the left, 4 times 2 plus 3 is 4 times 5, which is 20. And on the right, 4 times 2 plus 4 times 3 is 8 plus 12 which is also 20. Later in this series of lessons, you'll learn a lot more about the distributive property. Earlier in this lesson, you saw there were versions of these properties for addition and multiplication, but not for subtraction or division. The reason for this Subtraction and division are defined using addition and multiplication. Subtraction is defined using addition and the inverse property of addition. A minus B is defined as A plus the inverse of B. For example, 9 minus 5 is 9 plus negative 5. Notice you've been using this property all along without realizing it. For example, to solve this equation, you can subtract 5 from both sides or add negative 5 to both sides. Either way, it's the same. In a similar way, division is defined using multiplication in the inverse property of multiplication. A divided by B is defined as A times the inverse of B. For example, 8 divided by 2 is 8 times 1 over 2, which is equal to 4. You might think this is a rather useless definition until you remember this is the rule for dividing fractions. For example, 2 divided by 3 over 4 is 2 times 4 over 3, which is 8 over 3, or 2 and 2 thirds. This lesson described the properties of real numbers and how they're used in algebraic expressions. And this lesson was brought to you by the Math Fun Academy. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new math and new equations, to boldly go where no math student has gone before.